So from there, I wanted to flip back to uh, CoverFlow. This is the uh, view that I still use uh, most of the time. I just like the way it uh, looks, basically. And I wanted to show off the Genius Playlist feature. So in my uh, blog post, I talked about using one of the Deftones songs called Anniversary of an Un Uninteresting Event. And uh, I used that to create a Genius Playlist, and I kind of talked about um, how well it did and so on. So I kind of wanted to recreate that uh, in video form and also talk about the Genius uh, functionality. So I'm going to start off by uh, showing you how you interact with uh, Genius. So if I go down here, there are two new buttons, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see them. They're kind of small. I'll try to scroll in. Um, so there's Start Genius. That starts up your playlist, and then there's the Genius sidebar. So if I go ahead and click the Genius sidebar, it pops out a little surprise, surprise, a sidebar. And what that does is, based on whatever song you have selected over to the left, it pulls up recommendations, uh, album recommendations, song recommendations that pair with whatever song you have selected. Um, obviously this is pretty um, pretty good for Apple because they get to push some of their music through iTunes. You know, I'm sure sales will go up as people want to try to complete their libraries and get songs that match. So there's obviously that. Um, so I'm not really, I don't use, uh, I don't buy music from iTunes that much. I usually get it from Amazon MP3. So this functionality isn't really um, too important to me, but it's there. Uh, if nothing else, you could look at this and then based on whatever iTunes recommends, you might go to Amazon MP3 or somewhere and buy it there instead. That might be what I do sometime. But um, I also wanted to create a, uh, a playlist. And if I click off of a song, uh, let's see where I was. Where was I? What song? Um, I think I used, an yeah, Anniversary of an Uninteresting Event. So if I click that and go down to the Start Genius button, it should generate a playlist for me. So here we go. Here's the 25 song playlist and you can uh, limit it to a different size uh, if I wanted to do 50 songs. The only problem is that the more songs you do, since this is all based on the music that's in your library, um, the less accurate it's going to get. So if you do a hundred songs, it might start off pretty accurate. They might sound all the songs might sound pretty similar, but then by the end, you're kind of questioning some of the songs that it gets put in with. You can also refle uh, refresh the playlist. So if you don't like these songs, that it pairs up with whatever song you chose, you can hit refresh, and it redoes it. And you can do that as many times as you want, from what I can tell. Um, and you can save the playlist if you really like it. Over here. Um, along with your other playlists. I don't really use playlists very much. I usually just uh, listen to albums or do shuffle, but you can see there's a new tab for Genius. So if I click back to my music and then click back to Genius, <clears throat> it shows whatever Genius playlist I last made. So that's pretty cool. I, it's a new interesting way to listen to my music. I've been using it a lot actually, um, but I still kind of question how well it works. Um, I've been using a service called Pandora a lot, and basically what that does is, uh, based on a song you like, it will generate other songs that Pandora thinks you like, and it's uh, a free service, you can try it out, uh, I'm sure it's like Pandora.com, um, and I used that for a long time, and compared to that, the Genius Playlist is doesn't do nearly as well of a job. It might not try to do the same thing, though, I'm not sure if they were um, pairing it by genre, or if there's some deeper algorithm that analyzes um, the beats and stuff in different songs and then tries to pair them that way or what exactly they're trying to do but <clears throat> for the most part it starts out pretty well and then for me it ends up falling apart so if I go ahead and just play a few seconds of the song that I chose and I'll turn it up so you can hear it Okay, so obviously that's a pretty mellow song, you know, mostly uh, just percussion, a little bit of piano. It's by the Deftones. It's one of their uh, more laid-back songs, kind of similar to Team Sleep. So the first song that I get, which is good, is a Team Sleep song, um, and then some Porcupine Tree and so forth, and, those, and uh, also Opeth from their Damnation album, and that's a pretty mellow album. So um, <clears throat> that's good, but there's also some questionable songs, like I said. So 
you just heard a little bit of anniversary of an uninteresting event and one of the things that sticks out to me is this Dragon Force song down here. So if you know anything about Dragon Force, you know they're kind of heavier, they're a power metal band. Uh, definitely not mellow, I wouldn't classify them at all. Um, and so towards down here, the end of the uh, album, there's also some meatloaf here. Nothing wrong with a little meatloaf on occasion. Um, but you uh, realize that it kind of fades away from matching the songs as well. And this is, I think, is just because it's uh, limited to whatever songs are in your album rather than um, a service like Pandora where they match up songs that are in their database and they have, you know, tons and tons of music that they can pull from. Here I only have, uh, I think, maybe a thousand or so songs that it can match up against and so it's a little bit more difficult. So if I play this Dragon Force song and I'll only play a couple seconds of it, I can't remember exactly which one this one is, but I'm just going to show you how maybe it genius kind of gets it wrong a bit, so. So as you can tell, compared to Anniversary of an Uninteresting Event, um, <laughs> it doesn't really match up at all. So if we click back to that, nice slow, melodic song. Switch over to Dragon Force. You know, it's really heavy, upbeat, really fast power metal. And so I'm not sure if uh, maybe it just didn't know what songs to pull in and it just runs out of options or what happens there, but it doesn't seem to match up the whole way through. I'm not sure where, why it pairs Anniversary of an Uninteresting Event with uh, a Dragon Force song, but there it is. It does do a pretty good job on artists, though, I have to admit. Uh, like I said, Team Sleep is, uh, the singer for Team Sleep is the singer for Deftone, so first song it pulls in from that uh, is good. It pulls in a Team Sleep song. Porcupine Tree, I would say, is pretty similar to that kind of style. Um, obviously, some more Deftones further on down. Um, and overall, it does, so there's some perfect, uh, perfect circle. That's also pretty similar. So it does a pretty good job. I just wish it did a better job than it does. Um, and like I said, I'm not sure if that's a problem with the algorithm or if that's just uh, a byproduct of only being able to pull from whatever music you have on your machine rather than a database of music um, like services that, uh, um, like Pandora, which I mentioned in Last FM, uh, the way they do it is pull from their own uh, database. So, um, um, like I said, I like it. I'm using it, but it could be better. And they said that. Uh, as people use it, and more and more people use it, and one of the first thing you have to do before you use it is um, make a record of every all the music in your uh, collection, and that gets um, I don't know saved somehow to Apple servers, and then so the more and more people that use that, uh, eventually it will begin to get smarter and smarter supposedly. So uh, this may just be a problem for now, and it might clear up down the road, but. Who knows? Uh, so that's basically Genius uh, and the new album view. And before this um, video gets going too long, I should probably wrap it up. Like I said, I did a post covering not only the new iTunes 8.0, but also the new iPod Nano fourth generations and the tweaks they did to the iPod Touch. So if you want to go ahead and read that, you can do so at uh, davekemick.com blog. And um, I guess that's pretty much it for now. We'll see you soon.